So now that I'm ready to make the changes, I'm first going to say I'm at a good stopping point. And so I'm going to respond to Dev2. Yes, what's up, Dev2? Hey, what version of OKHTTP OK should I be using? In general, for any given library, the answer is always the latest version that works. Understand that in the open source world, it's sometimes possible for the latest version to not actually work. So it's very important when you're pulling in a new library that you want to test it. Um, additionally, the assumption here is that we're going to use a specific version in our, in our project manifest, so we're not just always pulling the latest. That's a whole other subject of conversation. It's a best practice. Uh, additionally, this is also trying to nudge the developer saying, this, you can do this with any library. Just pick the most recent version that works, verify it, use it. We're not too specific on exact versions, just the latest because it's going to have the least bugs in it. So when starting my work, I first like to look at what I'm changing from a test-driven development perspective. So I know that from a back-end perspective, I want to add a new service to login. So I'm going to have some login test. And because I'm following a testing pyramid strategy, I have different layers of test. And so I have this layer on top of that known as integration test, where I independently verify from an application end-to-end -end perspective that I can log in as an employee and log in as a customer. In my case, I'm leaving the customer login alone and I'm adding a new endpoint for employee login. So the good news by adding something, it's fairly low risk. I'm just adding something new. I'm not changing something existing. So I go in and make my changes and then I bring up the application's open API specification, uh, a swagger interface that's sometimes called. And that's just a way for interacting with web services in a visual way. Uh, all modern application frameworks for RESTful services are going to have something like this. I use that to verify that using the Okta session token that I pulled out of the front end manually, I pass it into the web service, make sure my code calls out to Okta and verifies it. I look up the user in the database, it returns me a session token, and then I call a protected service to verify it works. I'm good to go. Now it's time to push my changes. Because I'm a lead, I'm more comfortable and I'm not going to have someone directly peer review my work before I deploy it. So in my case, I intend to change the application in its main code base as it runs in the development environment. Before I do that though, I use the command line, in my case to run a command, I'm using Gradle here, and I say Gradle build, it runs the build, it checks the code coverage, it does all of the special testing to make sure that everything I've done locally works and passes. I'm good with it, I have no issues, and so I push my code to a central location. Because I'm following continuous integration practices, it immediately kicks off build and deployment to the dev environment. If you're not familiar with what CI is, that's continuous integration. And the three specific practices here come from Martin Fowler. And those are, as a developer, I want to change the main shared code base at least once per day so that I'm not leaving work on the table or going out and doing my own stuff for a long period of time without having checked. And once I change code, it automatically triggers this, uh, this build and test to make sure that my code integrates and works. And then finally, if it breaks, I fix it within 15 minutes. We're following that, and I sit here and I watch the deployment happen. In this case, the check part of the pipeline runs my static code analysis, make sure I have zero issues, my integration test and my unit testing is run, making sure that I have no issues, and then I'm above a certain coverage threshold from a quality perspective. The build works, and then I automatically deploy it out to the development environment, which is a central shared location that we use as developers. Because I'm also using an integration with my messaging technology, I get a message that says, hey, at 11 a.m., John committed this, it triggered this pipeline. This is helpful for knowing what's changing and who's changing what. To have a channel like this so I can see every build, every deployment, every merger just on the side so I'm aware of what's happening at all times from a development perspective. So I got my backend changes working. It's running out there in the dev environment and I verified it. So now it's time to go about making the changes to the front end. The process here is just about the same. I identify my test. In this case, I know that I'm only changing the employee login. And so what I'm going to go about doing is I'm going to bring up my application on the right and I'm going to go about proving out this new integration flow. I already proved out the first half of it before I started this. Now I just need to take that blank screen that I had and capture the session token and actually redirect it to the home screen for after login. 
I go about doing that, follow the same process with the idea of committing it, having the pipeline run, putting it in the dev environment, and then when it's in the dev environment, I can verify the change end to end. I can drive the UI to connect with the back end and verify this just as somebody in QA would. I'm good to go.